This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the Awesome Cast episode 493. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the uh, Sorgatron Media Studios, all by myself, socially distanced from my wife. No, that doesn't mean we're getting, we're having trouble. That just means she's on the other side of the studio producing the show. Uh, but we got, we got a a a a, a wonderfully social group uh, with us here tonight, and uh, the in, and in Brady Bunch form. If you're with us on video. Because that's what we do now. First of all, uh, uh, upper left block is uh, the uh, the Mister Mister Fancy Pants of Google Pants, uh, uh, Big Bank International Esquire. You've been around for two weeks. I forget what they call you. I, I, yeah, I've been in. I've been in the 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 abyss of Corona hell. Yeah, yeah. I forgot. I, I forgot. <laughs> I'm just like. I wonder why. I wonder why he hasn't been around for a while. And then like, he, he was like, Oh yeah, because this and this, I'm like, Oh, right. It's a bank. They're kind yes. of a big thing right now with what's going on. Okay. Yeah, we're I like one you. of those essential services things. Yes. 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 I'm like, Oh no, I saw you in the news. <clears throat> oh yeah. Yeah. You're busy. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's been, it's been a fun couple of weeks, but you know, I, I think it's, it's, it's getting better all the time. Mm-hmm. Just like the Beatles say just like the beatles say <laughs> um let's see also with us hold on dealing with some technology here also with us the daughters is back with us the cats are are apparently tearing through as we found out pre-show so if you hear any extra noises that may be that or they, or boba fett they, has attacked yeah boba fett. I'm, I'm celebrating my my very special revenge of the, the sith day yay I did wear Baby Yoda earlier because no one saw my Baby Yoda yesterday because I didn't mm-hmm. leave. <laughs> People saw it today. It's so not it a carryover. over. It was a Monday. Like, what are you really going to do on a Monday, right? Exactly. You know? Like, so I wore, wore Baby Yoda to chemo, and then now I'm a bad guy. So I was a good guy go. earlier, a bad guy. Now. I, 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 brought, um, I brought C-3PO and, and R2 over into the set for last night's show, and I said, ah, we'll just keep them around for tonight, too. Uh, I'll just let them cameo a little bit. I mean, it's more kind of C-3PO <laughs> torso and uh top lid of r2 but you know you get the idea you get the idea somebody somebody's watching out for me and it's able to translate if those russian bots start tweeting me again uh anyways uh also back with us also uh gadget dude over at big bank international is crazy kraus ron kraus how you doing sir i'm good how about yourself all right man welcome back well you you're always rocking the star wars in the background <laughs> always i'm all star wars i even got a star wars t-shirt on yes so. yay oh uh, man so uh thank you so much guys and thank you everybody in the chat room i know my mom was checking the test stream earlier uh so 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 hi mom i felt so bad because I, I popped back in because i was testing something new and it crashed and it was like 25 minutes before the show starts. And then I look back and I see my mom going, hello, is anybody here? I'm like, oh, no, she's by herself in the chat room. <laughs> so um, anyways, uh, thanks to Dave Potter. Thanks to uh, hanging out in the chat room. I see Brian Crawford out there. I see uh, uh, Bradley out there. Uh, no, Katie, don't show your butt. I know that's what happens when Bradley comes up. <laughs> <laughs> it strikes at any could strike at any time <laughs> at any point but anyways please go check out everything at awesomecast.com where you can subscribe to the show um as well as uh, uh check out any past episodes links and everything uh, uh from this uh, we, we link uh, all the stories we can from the show uh from our show notes uh, so you guys can follow along, see any of the videos if you're listening to the Awesome Cast or, or, or yeah, listening on the podcast forum or anything like that. Please follow us on Twitter at Awesome Cast over there. Facebook is Awesome Cast. We have a great Facebook group uh, for Awesome Cast as well, where a lot of the stories throughout the week and stories that you guys submit and often becomes part of the show. Uh, 
please, again, subscribe to us in podcast form, whether that be on Apple Podcasts, Google Place Podcasts, Google Podcasts, I guess. I, I'm still getting used to the nomenclature. Um, and, uh, you know, Spotify, all those places, wherever you want to make sure you get those episodes every week. And, or subscribe to the Sorgatron Media Master Feed, where you can get everything Sorgatron Media throughout the week. I think, we're, on average, we're putting out about 10 podcasts a week, including some experimental shows, um, like a new toy podcast that's been popping up a couple times over the last month. Uh, so you can check that out as well. And again, we are here live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern on the Facebook Live is the primary place where you guys are hanging out with us tonight. But of course, we are also on the Sorgatron Media Twitch and the Awesome Cast Periscope page and maybe on the YouTube. I haven't verified that quite yet. Uh, so please go check out us on all those platforms. And of course, we're on all those. So and we are on the YouTube. It did work tonight. Thank you, Restream. Uh, so um, but uh, you can be a part of that. We do keep an eye on the chat rooms across the board as much. But of course, a lot of the general conversation is happening on that Facebook page. Thank you to our audio partners, the 405 media.com and post industrial audio streaming on the post on the 405 media every uh, weekday at noon eastern time and of course a lot of great pittsburgh podcasts listed over our friends at postindustrial.com also with a lot of great um, um local breast belt news for all of you guys in pittsburgh all the way through uh to michigan ohio uh and all the areas there so please go check them out thank you patreon supporters patreon.com slash awesome cats our friends at the coffee club level matt weller johnny DeGore. John DeGore, not Johnny, I'm sorry, uh, and John Carmen, um, and also our friends at the fan of the show level, uh, Katie's favorite Fedor, Michael Fedor, and pghmuseums.org. Thank you, everybody, for supporting the show, especially through these times. Um, thank you for helping us keep, uh, keep the uh, bills paid and the lights on here in the studio. So let's get into our awesome thing of the week. Down the line, Kraus, you're back with us, and you got... You you brought something. You brought something to show us. Is Kraus there? Did I miss him? Kraus, are no, you I was on talking on mute. He's on mute. Um, it's all right. It's all right. It's been yeah, a couple I weeks. was. I bought this wireless charging stand. It was cheap. You know, I don't know about you guys, but um, most of my phones. Oh, and by the way, I'm back on the Samsung. Hey. And if anybody cares, I moved back. I left Apple. It crushed Chilla. Oh. Oh, and now he's talking on mute. Yeah, now I'm talking on mute. It was a sad day when I got that green bubble. I'm yeah, I know. <laughs> you were like, what the hell? I'm like, I can't see when you're typing. And I know you yeah. can't see when I'm typing. This is ridiculous. Yeah, but um, I like I said, I wasn't looking for the most advanced wireless. I was looking for something cheap. Uh, one of the things I liked about it is there's a, a little green light that comes on when you put the device down so you know that you're charging it only stays on 16 seconds so it doesn't keep you up at night because it sits right next to the bed and it was USB-C and so like I said I'm not looking for a real fast charge I'm just looking for something to you know get top my phone back off at the end of the day when I'm going to bed so it works great and it was uh 12 1299 I think it was so okay a good little wireless charging stand if anybody's looking for one. So that is that's generally like so it says it's case friendly too. So this is if I have yep. my Otter Box on my uh, iPhone eight, and I think the iPhone eight is compatible, correct? Um, as long as it does wireless charging, yeah. I think I think they did at that point. I I don't know. I, I thought they'd been like the sevens yeah. and the sixes were too. So so this oh, ooh, I might have to jump on it. You said it's only like twelve bucks. Yeah, it was it was twelve dollars. Twelve ninety nine. It is the UTech Y O O T E C H. It is now in my cart. Uh, wireless <laughs> charger key. So then there's just a bunch of stuff. Uh, but it's the UTech. UTech. Right. <laughs> Fantastic. That might be the perfect thing. So this is like a nightstand kind of thing, right? Ex ex that's exactly why I bought it. Mm -hmm. Exactly why I bought it. It's it's for my nightstand, and it's great too because you know if you wake up in the middle of the night, you wonder what time it is. You can just reach over, grab the phone, look at it real quick, and set it back down. Like I said, the light goes back off, so it doesn't you know, keep your room illuminated or anything. Because mm -hmm. it's amazing how much light comes off of one of those little LEDs when your bedroom is pitch dark. Oh, absolutely. You, you, yeah. you know what, what device I find to be amazing in the, in, in the dark is the Google Home, the screen-based devices. More than the Amazon shows, like it gets 
so dim when the lights go out, but you can still just barely seeing it, see the time. Mm -hmm. And then like kind of as you walk by it, obviously it has the motion detection, motion detection built in. It'll bring up like key information. The, The funny part is it still tells me in the morning when I walk back into the room from brushing my teeth that the next T is coming at X, X, Y, Z time. Not like nice. I'm getting on the T to go into work, but nice. um, it has a lot of like those little pop-ups. But the thing that impressed me the most about it was how it auto dims and how dark it does get when the room is pitch black. Hmm. Very cool. Which one do you have, John? I have the smaller one. Okay. Cause I've been looking at those. I keep thinking I'm going to buy one. <laughs> So I got the, so we have the, is it the Google? Is it, it's, it's not the home, is it? Yeah, it's the Google it's home. It's the home. So the home, I, we have the home with the small screen up in the bedroom. And then we have the Echo Show downstairs. I am not impressed with the microphone on the show. Okay. It doesn't mm-hmm. have... It, it it's I'm I'm guessing the way the microphones are calibrated, it's expecting you to be in front of it, like you're mm-hmm. looking at the screen when you're using it, and it doesn't pick. We I used it to replace an old just Echo Dot, and it doesn't seem to have the mic throw that to get all over the room. I mean, I used to be able to just pretty much say, "Hey, so and so." from anywhere at a pretty quiet tone and it would pick me up versus I feel like we're constantly repeating ourselves saying, Hey, so and so with say, Hey, so and so. Hmm. But I'm guessing it's because it's the screen and it's almost like they expect you to be in front of it, but it's good to be able to walk by it and then a glance, see what the weather's going to be and what the news type stuff is without having to ask and get voice response, but not impressed with the mic. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Chilla, what's your awesome thing? So Apple had a little announcement this week that I thought we weren't going to be getting for another month. And uh, yeah, it just kind of dropped, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like every other week. It was like, hey, here's a new Apple something. Yeah. I mean, it makes me wonder what they're going to keep for June. Mm-hmm. Um, but so they announced the new and improved 13 inch MacBook Pro. Um, new keyboard to appease whatever his name is. Um, what did he direct? Did he direct one of the... Um, oh, what's his name? He was one of the Marvel directors. Oh, was it one of the Russos or something? No, it was, it was a Ty... What, something... Oh, wait, wait, key, what, oh, geez. Yeah, you know who I'm talking about. The guy that just he got... was the one complaining about the keyboards. And, okay. Um. So this, they actually went, you can actually get one with a 8th or 10th generation Intel chip up to 32 gig of memory. So they've doubled the capacity for memory. Um, I think the all of the prices stayed relatively the same, but double the hard drive at the same price point, kind of like they did with 16 inch. Um, goes up to quad core. Um, they will do up to an i7. Um, my device is getting old. So my device is a little over five years. Um, so I'm, I'm in the market for a new device and I can't decide, do I splurge and go up to the 16 inch or do oh, I, st- by the way, I, I love, and thank you for phonetically spelling it partner. Taiko Waititi. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> he spelled a Taiko like the toy. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I can't decide if I want to go with 16 inch. If I go with 16 inch, that's, what seven eight months old now so should i just wait another oh, three months seven eight months come on <laughs> if you're getting a laptop now go with the big one come on but, but no so but that's the that's the difference so i so the if i jump back to the older one that was released in the fall the 16 inch mm-hmm. i can go all the way up to an i9 processor mm-hmm. and go at least six core if I get the new one and it's good, but it's an old, it's a generation chip back. If I go with the newest chipset on the 13 inch, 
I Ch- can't go. Ch- wait, wait, wait. Chilla, what kind of work do you do again? What, what kind of high level work do you do again? Rocket science. What do you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I like you're not you're not running Final Cut Pro. You're not running you're not running 3D Mark. Uh, uh, you know 3D Max. Uh, you know things I like want, that. Right. I want to squeeze want every it. second. Like I mean, how how deep do your spreadsheets go, uh, Chilla? Not I, very. I, I big bank. So, so here's what it is. I, I, I pro- and, and I know you run virtual machines. You, you, I know you run virtual machines. I, I so do run virtual machines. Up. Yes. Um. So I do want an extra an extra CPU pretty much lying around at all times. The other thing with the 16 inches, I can get a dedicated GPU versus using the Intel Mm -hmm. that. So here's my issue. Portability though. I would say probably about every three months. So I know this is few and far between, but about every three months I do a final cut video and it typically is picture in picture and I hate waiting for rendering. Mm-hmm. And I hate mm-hmm. waiting for compression. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't want to wait any longer than I have to. Okay. And my, my laptop today, when I when when I go through this, it pretty much sounds like the space shuttle taking off. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh my and, well, well mine is like what a 2018 macbook it, it, or well, mm-hmm. yeah bought it a year ago so it would have been about a 2018 macbook pro and yeah no it's like that all the time and it is it is but it's yeah. also but it's also processing a lot basically all the time mm-hmm. right so i so, so i guess that's my point of view as the fa- even the amount of time that will save me every couple months throwing some video together i'm willing to to plunk down because the other thing i look at is so i'm still using my 20 13 Oof. MacBook Air. Yeah. And I'm still using my 2009 Mac Mini. Okay, and those are the things you're doing final cut on? No, no. Oh. Those are like some servers, okay. file servers, okay. some just random they 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 do other things. What is your what is your your final cut machine? It's a 2015 13-inch Pro. You're not going to see much difference between going this six month old model and next year's model. You'll be fine. Right. That, but no, no, no. So that's the difference between do I get the, the higher end one from three from six months ago mm-hmm. or do I get the current one that's actually less spec than the older 16 inch? Older 16 inch. Okay. Yeah. No, no, I would go. No, you buy you buy the most computer you can afford when you buy a computer. Is the general oh, I rule? Well, so here's the kicker: and that so is going to be that one. So, so it'll be the it'll be the old hand me down approach, right? The, yes. The 2011 MacBook is getting kicked off the shelf. Okay. It's getting replaced with the MacBook Air. Okay. The 13 inch is becoming what the MacBook Air was doing, and then I have my new one that's my daily driver. Right. Not to mention, I have the twenty some inch the floating uh, iMac, floating iMac, just hanging out, so, just yep. hanging out, loving life. Well, that runs some that runs I, some I, Minecraft server. Have I talked about my my two thousand seven iMac? Is wonderful what, for watching Hulu live. Oh, I'm sure. I go up in the studio. Is it takes me forever to load it, but once you're loading, <laughs> like it looks, it's a great TV. <laughs> really um it's like a 21 inch imac and it's like that's literally all it can do because uh, it's back on i don't know it's not snow leopard but something back there so it's like the first the first island but anyways maybe a first mountain island. i don't know what, what, whatever that we used to call these but anyways getting out of that because we can go really into the weeds with that katie what is your awesome thing of the week i got two things awesome okay so the first thing is spring cleaning Yielded brand new headphones for me. <laughs> brand, wait, wait, brand new. <laughs> brand, okay, so brand when, new you get your, when you get your iPhone X, there's headphones buried underneath. <laughs> oh, wait, you didn't know? <laughs> I think I was so excited for the new phone that I was, I was trying to set it up quickly, and I didn't realize it was buried underneath everything, and I don't even need a dongle. This is amazing. It was so funny because I was cleaning out my, my stuff and I was, you know, I have all the boxes from my mm-hmm. tech and mm-hmm. I was just going through them seeing, you know, I don't know, like, it was like, what's in here? Make sure I got everything out. And I was like, oh, this is heavy. And I was like, oh, there's headphones. That's really cool. So I had no clue. Well, at least you didn't throw the box out not knowing. Yeah. See, see I'm good. So yeah, spring clean, find things. <laughs> so let's uh, just explore, explore the entirety of your box when you get <laughs> yes. new electronics because you never know what surprises or dongles oh, or adapters might be in there. Do you also get 
did, did they still have the um the the dongle adapter came with those nope you just no. get the ones with the no nope. because I, I know i did with the eight i did the the 8s or the, 8 max so i i did yep. with my last one too they, they stopped hmm. 10 bucks walmart yep. 10 bucks i need to get i need to buy like a pack of 50 because <laughs> i lose them all well, okay. that'll be a little so cheaper I'm, than that if you're i don't know if you many. bought the I don't know if anyone's bought like some of the knockoff ones, mm-hmm. but I I've been I tried to save myself like an extra three dollars and bought the one of the knockoff ones, and it constantly buzzed mm-hmm. in one of the channels. Yeah. So I'm like, I'll, I'll go buy another one of the Apple ones, and then I lost it, and I'm like, I'll just buy another knockoff from a different brand that has decent stars on Amazon, and then that one would like clip and disconnect and i just gave up and so, i've just so, been spending the so don't buy full this, price ten dollar so so don't it's only ten dollars i felt like that was like a 20 or 30 dollar piece i, I like I, i'll drop ten dollars for the official one for that really yeah That's i bought it. one for the wife for her credit card swiper for paypal mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so it just stays permanently attached to that yeah I, I will tell you um, when you're looking on Amazon and shopping for like the dongles or any sort of like off brand tech, pay attention to the reviews at yes. the bottom because they don't necessarily like you'll see a bunch of stars, but then you'll go down to the reviews and be like, this is the best towel I've ever bought. And the reviews <laughs> don't match the product. So somehow these companies sell, they, they just sell so many different things that the reviews like aggregate and the stars aggregate. Yeah. So yeah. someone might love this, but then if you read in the reviews, you'd be like, oh, this, this dongle did not work. And then that's where you find like the nitty gritty. So always. So, so a lot of times what I do is I actually, I stopped reading the high star reviews. I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't need to read a high star review. I just filter, show me the lowest ratings. Mm-hmm. Cause those are the ones I want to read. Those are the ones that'll tell you that like, this is not an official Apple adapter and things like that. Mm-hmm. Right. So this hey, is, if you pay, if you pay nine ninety nine for for one of these at Best Buy, they'll give you four months of of Apple Music <laughs> for new subscribers. Holy crap! So, all right, I'm, I've added so much stuff to my cart on Best Buy and Amazon since we started this show. <laughs> so, thanks guys. A twelve twelve dollar wireless adapter you can't pass up. But. Uh, Katie, you have a secondary awesome thing you said. Yes, for Star Wars week, uh, on uh, if you have Disney Plus, uh, Disney Gallery dropped The Mandalorian behind the scenes. It's a series of vi- uh, videos. This first one is a roundtable with a director and directors. Sorry, and it's it's amazing. It is it was so good. And to see, mm-hmm. I think one of the most mind blowing things for me. I don't want to spoil too much. Um, but one of the mind blowing things for me was the fact that the, a lot of the backgrounds are digital screens Mm -hmm. and the sets are very small and I haven't seen really good video of that until this behind the scenes video. Like I think purposefully, but holy crap. We talked about, I think it might've been a week you were off, but I think uh, there was a video going around a few months ago about that. And we were, we were talking about that And, and, and they get into how, so it's like a big round screen and then like the the background will actually parallax move as the camera moves correct Mm -hmm. so like you can do like these 3d spatial things and you just have to build like the immediate set more or less Mm -hmm. so like it's 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 amazing like basically nothing was done outside for the mandalorian yeah (laughs) for for, for a spacious looking show nothing was outside for that Mm -mm. so that's awesome that's awesome yeah check it out definitely worth it definitely worth it if you're a fan of the show and just even just listening to all the directors talk about what's you know their specific episodes and what they were going for and Mm -hmm. working together and it just it's really good awesome that's definitely definitely worthwhile now because i think it's coming i think the show was coming a little earlier this season like september maybe yeah i think they're being nice to us yeah yeah (laughs) are they are they going to be able to or is it or is it going to be delayed because of, I, or were they done filming? At I least? believe filming is in the can. So you just have to worry about oh, post-production nice. and okay. you know, they're going to figure it out, you know, <laughs> especially as much as that's already digitized. Right. So, yeah. yeah. And I think this actually came out earlier than expected. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The gallery. Yeah. Yeah. They're kicking, they're kicking some stuff up with all the, uh, I'm wondering if we're going to, are we going to have to wait for 2021 to see black widow? Didn't they get a new date? I didn't that get bumped to like November. I think it like November, August, November, something like that. So I mean, I think everything. Uh, yeah, it depends. Like the Disney stuff just bumped to like s- five, six months. 
um, than other stuff like Fast and the Furious with John Cena bumped a year for some reason. <laughs> Oh, we got Tro- Trolls World Tour at least. Uh, so, <laughs> all right. So this is this is the technology awesome thing I I got because uh, yeah, we're gonna have a little bit other some more robot stuff later. But um, this is a a drone disguised as a hummingbird that they use to capture footage of a monarch monarch butterfly swarm. Uh, the video in this article at uh, fstoppers.com is actually from PBS Nature, and yeah, it looks like a little toy like i i I don't know there's a bird equivalent but i keep thinking of like how the kind of fakish tackles of of little worms and bugs and stuff that you use like that's the kind of look there is to this uh this hummingbird it's got two um propellers like at the top of the wings and it shows it at a point in this video hopefully it comes up here soon for you guys so the propellers are actually protected so the butterflies can actually and do land on the butterfly itself and and they're protected from it um and it's a video you know obviously a video camera um um situation uh in the hummingbird uh that gets these great great images of this just ginormous uh monarch butterfly swarm um somewhere across like just just trees full of these things uh so that's awesome so great little drone tech there um maybe <laughs> Maybe we'll get bees too. There, there's the butterfly landing on it. So, awesome thing from F Stafford. So, you check that link if you're listening on audio. Uh, ch- check out the video there. So, that's a tiny one too. Like, I, I, I'm curious the camera technology for something that small. The, the oh, it has like a sc- picture. It has a screen over the. I was wondering how they did that. How they covered the. Mm-hmm. The thing, but it's actually like a. It looked like a metal screen when it when it kind of landed there. Yep, yep, a nice little protector there. So go check that out. So that's our first robot thing, but we'll get to the other one in a second. First of all, I want to give a shout out to our friends that uh, over at Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcast with the perfect pepperoni pizza for a good long time. Most of our uh, ten years, of course, in doing this show. Uh, check them out, and thank you, everybody. Uh, uh, Brian Crawford actually uh, dropped in the. Um, dropped in the chat before we got going that he just ordered some uh, some slice on Broadway. So I'm, I'm glad he's keeping in the spirit over there. So thank you so much for that. And, uh, and thank you. I know a lot of people have over the last several weeks. I know there's a lot of craziness going on. So thank you to everybody that's supporting them. Again, Beachview, Carnegie, East End, PNC Park. You can get almost anywhere in and around the city thanks to uh, food apps and and, and direct delivery and everything too. Um, so please go check them out. Sliceonbroadway.com. And thank you to those guys for supporting the show. All right, let's take a look uh, for a moment. We got a couple of stories come in over the awesome cast uh, Facebook group. A lot of great stories over there. Um, uh, first, so usually, usually I give a shout out to Chachi. I know he's moving into uh, GameCube uh, games here because I just lent him my GameCube. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm excited to see what's going on. I mean, normally we're talking about his, uh, the game and, uh, and, and, and I should know better when he's, when he, when he texts me a, a strange idea that within 24 hours, he's going to try the idea. Uh, so his latest thing is put a pickle on it. Have you guys seen this? Yeah. <laughs> so he is, I saw some pictures. Yeah. He saw some pictures. He saw some of the pre-production pictures that he did. Um, I think he's order, already ordered a backdrop for <laughs> for this. <laughs> he's going into this uh, pretty big, so so check that out. And I believe it's uh, YouTube. Put a pickle on it uh, uh, on YouTube as well. He he started a channel for it and everything. <laughs> so please drop in there, give him advice. He's kind of just he's doing it with what's on hand for him, uh, and and he is not a video person, you know, firsthand at, at all. But he's an IT guy, and he will figure some stuff out so uh go check that out he has uh put a pickle on cool ranch doritos so far and i believe the one out uh, uh, today that came out was he put a pickle on on a marshmallow so <laughs> uh so so keep a keep an eye out for what chachi's up to uh dave ponder shared um apple is going to host the virtual worldwide developer conference beginning june 22nd uh and he says um um Fire up your memojis for all the virtual WWDC. Wouldn't that be great? Is that is that how we're doing yeah. that? Are you just going to jump in with your memojis? 
I mean, that's what the image is that they're dropping here on the Apple newsroom, actually. So, <laughs> wow. I, th- I think that I think the reason they did the kind of emoji kid looking thing is because there's a student challenge mm. that's going to be they're going to be giving away free swag, pens, jackets. There's a it's a challenge. I think it's 13 and up. Mm-hmm. Um. To build your own Swift playground lesson. Nice. So it's an opportunity for student developers to showcase their love of coding by creating their own Swift playground. So I got a question. Mm -hmm. If this is at all successful, will this end the whole let's get together in person? Nope. No, not, not completely, but it may shrink it, perhaps? I think it... So I think it will... I think it will open it up to more individuals because if okay. you look at all the developer conferences, they sell out mm-hmm. really quick. I think it's going to open it up to more people. From what I've heard from people that go to WWDC, as well as any of these conferences, it's not always about being in the classroom in person. It's about the partnerships, friendships and relationships that are built in the hallways or by going up to the instructor after Mm -hmm. the session or creating the, you know, um, I've met, you know, product managers that when I say product managers, I mean like, they have impact in changing the trajectory of the roadmap for products, um, creating those types of relationships. I don't think you're going to be able to do virtually, mm-hmm. but <clears throat> if you are just interested in taking some of the classes and learning about some of the coding stuff, I think it, I, I just think it's going to put, put it in the hands of more people, but there, there's still going to be value in going in person. Okay. I think the biggest thing is because everything from WWDC as far as the classes tended to be recorded anyways and put online. So that's just kind of the first wave instead of being the secondary, right? Mm -hmm. In this case. So I like, how do you facilitate, how do you facilitate the connections? You know, this is one thing, you know, other events that, that I've been involved with. It's like, okay, we can do a virtual event, but that takes away. Yeah. It takes away things like, you know, taking the thing you built and actually driving it, but it also takes away, you know, being in person to talk with that person at a booth or that's a tech inspector that's from like a Hyundai or a or a Siemens or something that could be a, a potential employer, right? It's so like that's the opportunity that's taken away from okay. most people. How do you facilitate that in a virtual landscape? That could be chat rooms, that could be connections, that could be, you know, you need to create a virtual social setting that's still not equivalent, but that can at least uh, pick up the slack for that. Correct. Chilla. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know how, even if you thought about it and they did, you know, virtual breakouts in zoom or something like that, it's Mm -hmm. not, there's no good way to do a breakout room or how do you, how do you take a, a conference, a, a, video conference like zoom with let's just put a number in there 50 and how do i figure out hey i want to go over and talk to that guy over there Mm -hmm. and what how do you kind of work that into a virtual setting i just don't i don't think we're emotionally or mentally ready for that yet Mm -hmm. um i I think it still takes that in-person walk up to someone Mm -hmm. That was a big thing with PodCamp. It was more about like who do you meet in the hallways, right? Than mm-hmm. uh, than anything else. When we if, if it wasn't for PodCamp, I wouldn't be on this show. Exactly. <laughs> a lot of us wouldn't be hanging out together between yep. between <laughs> PodCamp and 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 everything. So I think I think I've, I met all of you guys except for Kraus at PodCamp, right? Is, is that seem yeah? Does that track? It's all that tracks. Like the, the last ten years of my life is really fuzzy. I just like. I met my wife at PodCamp. There's that too. <laughs> Look You're out. A PodCamp couple. So, anyways, uh, Brian Crawford, uh, this is not a touchscreen. Son of a stupid MacBooks. Uh, 
damn it. I knew I was going to regret bringing this into the workflow. Um, but anyways, uh, uh, speaking of the robots we were talking about earlier, Brian Share is this um, this robot that, uh, in conjunction with Carnegie Mellon, is being used at the Pittsburgh International Airport. It is um, it is a cleaning an automated cleaning robot that is um, actually kind of doing a test on doing cleaning plus a po- deploying ultra ultraviolet cleaning to the walkways at the airport. Um, so, and, and this is a similar method to apparently ultraviolet is already being used for cleaning in hospitals. Um, I think we've talked about on the show about these ultraviolet like phone cleaning mechanisms that you can buy off of Instagram. Um, so that's the idea here. Uh, so so that is being deployed. It's kind of a test run that they're doing for a few weeks, and they're actually going to see if, if it does help eliminate some of those problem microbes uh, that could lead to uh, things like the COVID-19 in, in high traffic areas like an airport like this, where it's definitely a big focal point for people mixing. <laughs> It looks closed. It's like when I get there in the morning. <laughs> so that TGI Fridays is definitely not open. Um, so, uh, yeah, Brian shared this one. And uh, once again, another, you know, I, I keep forgetting until I see articles like this. Maybe you notice when you hang out in Oakland a little bit more uh, how many uh, robotics come through this town. But, uh, so go check out the video for that over in the links. Uh, thanks, Brian, for sharing that. Let's see uh, what else we got here. Um, speaking of Roomba robots, <laughs> he has a, a story about Roombas keeping it with the robots uh, going on here. Um, there, he has an article of the best Roombas. I heard that the Roomba lawnmower to, is getting delayed. To clarify, Sorg, hmm. he shared that he got a recent Roomba. Okay. I pulled the article. You pulled the article for it. Yes. Okay. <gasps> Did you see the game with the Roomba? What is the Roomba game? It There's was on game? TikTok. And so the family did the Olympics. And they taped two knives to the top of the Roomba and blew up balloons and taped them to the floor and put like their names. Like each one of them had a balloon with their name on it. And they just let the Roomba run around the room and stab the balloons. And whoever's balloon was standing won that round of the Olympics. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and then yes. the Roomba cleaned up the balloons. So it's a win win. Yes. <laughs> Roomba Olympics. And here I was just happy my Roomba was on the list. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, here's and and uh, Brian sent sent us footage of his Roomba in action. I need to, I really need to get a Roomba. <laughs> so, <laughs> I feel like I don't know. I feel like I don't have enough floor space because I have like two floors, and it's like, well, like gonna have to like let it run and then carry it upstairs and let it run again, right? Like, is that how it works when you when you have that situation? Wait, so what's the situation? But like, I have like two floors, and I'm worried that like, how do I how do I manage that? Do I get a Roomba per you, floor? What like what you, do what you do get you a do? Roomba? So you get a Roomba per floor, and with the Roomba comes like this magnetic tape. Okay, it's really really meant to go under like a rug or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and you put the tape at the is at, at the steps or the areas you don't want it to go over okay so obviously you don't want the Roomba tumbling down the stairs no i mean it'd be fun at one time <laughs> <laughs> that's all you yeah, get it's that's... very expensive right so when, the, when the Roomba has 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 come the end of life that's that we just make it walk the plank yes so yeah it comes with like this roll of tape and i'm guessing it's some kind of magnetic thing um and it won't go over it so that's how it senses not to tumble down the steps. So yes, if you have three floors, you get three Roombas. If you have one floor, you get one, two for two, et cetera, et cetera. The uh, other thing I highly, highly recommend, if you have any kind of like the throw blankets with like the little tassel oh. type things, do not leave those like hanging off the couch onto mm. the floor or Roomba stacked. Will eat them. The Roomba will will rip them apart, um, and then it'll get stuck, and you'll get a text message from your Roomba that says, <laughs> "Hey, I have a problem. <laughs> Help me." <laughs> Mine's name is Rosie. Nice, nice. Um, so Stephen is in the chat room, and he he said I needed to share this video, and I pulled it up. It is Roomba beer pong. So the Roomba is it, the 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 
the cups are taped to the top of the Roomba, and the Roomba keeps moving all over the table <laughs> without falling off, mostly, I think. Okay, there's weird stuff happening there. Uh, so you have to play the beer pong with the moving cups on the Roomba, which is actually kind of fun looking. So, <laughs> so, um, so we need a couple of Roombas now. So you're saying when I get my multiple Roombas, because that's what I need to do for my house, then I can I have two Roombas that I can play uh, Roomba beer pong later too, right? Yes. Yeah. So it's just double use, and uh, there you go. There you go. That's now that's an investment. That's a true investment there. So. If you only have one Roomba, I'm guessing you could put it on the table and then back up from the opposite sides of the center and just pretend like it's two Roombas for Roomba Pong. Uh, uh, Missy, is this a video of the, this is the, this is the Roomba uh, uh, challenge that Katie was talking about? Oh, geez. So there it is. (laughs) There's the balloons and their names are on there and their (laughs) knives. I just just that look at knives on the side of a Roomba. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you weaponized your Roomba. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Uh, uh, please, is this is this is somebody at Roomba at iRobot like watching these videos and saying, "All right, we got to put a new warning label on the packages now." Um, <laughs> Absolutely. Jeez. Do, and people read that like, why is this warning a thing? That's why. Do we, what do you mean? Do not attach knives to your Roomba. What What do you mean? Do not do not play beer pong with your Roomba. What, what do you mean? Don't send your Roomba down the steps. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, that works really well, actually. Uh huh. <laughs> Those awesome. knives are really sharp. Yes, they are. They are. They, <laughs> you're taping down the balloons because the, the first ones I saw. So the balloon was. I don't think they taped it down yet. She has she bare was, feet. She was holding it with her feet. Yeah, with her bare feet. I'm just like, I don't think that's going to work out too well. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but there you go. There, there's some fun new games for you to your weaponized, newly weaponized Roomba. Oh geez, let's see what else is going Sorry, on. Sorgatron Media is not responsible for any damage or <laughs> no, no, <laughs> you need no. To have some kind of le- legal thing there, Sorg. Yeah, I'm sorry. The, but, the, yeah. Put that in a crawl underneath the. Uh, he says that's amazing. Brian, Brian is currently leaving the chat room to go attach <laughs> uh, knives and forks to his Roomba and see what he can well, get into. <laughs> Brian, listen, listen. New plan. I hope you're still listening. So what you do is you make a balloon for each of us and we like give you two bucks. It could be like there's some big pool you can put in your house. We'll see whose balloon lives the longest. Oh, we already know that because Dutters is so awesome that somehow Dutters will always win. (laughs) This is why it's the perfect game. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, Riz has a few uh, stories in here uh, real quick. NVIDIA graphics. um, Up. Can upgrade the quality of your of your calls. RTX Voice is available for beta on the uh, RTX uh, uh, GPUs. So this is. Am I getting this right? Bad words incoming. It's pretty cool. Face. Here's a Facebook link he has. Um, but I guess the idea is they're using the GPU to run the voice on these calls. If, is it running the voice or is it trying to do? Like AI against filtering out background noise and it's it's so this is this yeah so this is probably this is for like when you're you're gaming right and uh, they they're, they're saying the RTX voice uses the hardware found in the uh, NVIDIA's RTX GPUs which are their higher end G- GPUs some of that technology if you're using the GeForce Now cloud gaming service you get to see some of that um, the process your incoming and outgoing audio and eliminate almost all background noise um, they, the demonstrations they have here for comparison if you want to get into the audio. That uh, was recorded with a blue snowball microphone, which we use here. But it's like a it's a nice fifty dollar microphone. That's pretty standard for for some of our clients where we don't want to worry too much about about setup for their podcasting needs. Um, and using built in call recording functionality in Zoom. So that's just a it's just kind of a new application for GPUs, right? And again, GPUs aren't just gaming; they're using a lot of that for for AI now, um, you know, and, and, and things like that. Like it's really kind of diversified that a bit. So interesting. Interesting. Um, Riz also shares, share, start making your own games with the unity training classes. Now unity is great because it, it's like, um, it's, it's, I think a mostly free, um, gaming engine. you you'll, you'll see it in front of a lot of your like indie games and um, um, iPhone games, 
uh, mobile games a lot uh, from from uh, certain people. You can get a master game development um, best practices with an industry leading game engine. Uh, so this is something that they're rolling out there, and and I I'm sure there've been some co- sort of courses before, but and I actually have some friends that have put out some game apps with the Unity engine. Um, so this is official Unity game development bundle. You can pick it up for sale for just twenty five dollars. Yeah, I got to tell wow. you, I was looking looking hard at adding this to the cart. You want to talk about adding the cart? Uh-huh, uh-huh. I, I was getting close to that for twenty five bucks. Why not? Start you start developing some some Pac Man games and some. I mean, it, it's it's got and I think they have some tools. If you're like, I want to do an X type like old arcade game kind of thing, like I want to make an Asteroids type game or a uh, a, a, a Galaga kind type of game or something like that. I, I'm pretty sure this is the one that has some of those tools to get you started, right? Yeah, I believe so. So and that's what they'll kind of get you into. So and then I mean the programming's in there. Um, yeah, Unity C plus Survival Guide, um, Ultimate Guide to Cinematography with Unity, uh, Ultimate Guide to 2D Mobile Game Development. And I believe this is both 2D and 3D, correct? Yeah, 2D and 3D, all in one engine. Um, so that's Unity, and and it is again one of those. If you make it in Unity, like you could port it out to like there's stuff on Xbox and Nintendo that 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 comes up with the Unity engine. So you could really kind of push something across, all the way across um, um, about every uh, about every platform. So good to find there. So anybody looking to get in that with their spare time lately, uh, you can start doing that. And also Amanda, thank you for sharing this. And I think she mentioned it last week. But uh, and this kind of, this dropped out of nowhere. I think I think it dropped early as well. There is a if you liked Mall Rats, the old Jane Silent Bob film, um, as, and I, I know I do. Uh, you can check out the Jane Silent Bob Mall Brawl being released, uh, I guess, this week. Oh, released May 7th, so actually tomorrow. And you can get... I love I love when Wintro games do this. Like, you can get a um, a Nintendo cartridge of the game. But it's also on a Nintendo... Or, I'm sorry, uh, Steam as well. So... When- I saw there. It's going to be available in the Nintendo eShop. So does that mean we'll be able to get it on my Switch? Yep, that means it's a Switch game. Steam, fifteen dollars. Side note and related to it, Streets of Rage Four is freaking awesome. Yeah, it is awesome. awesome. It is on uh, Xbox Game Pass. Uh, I think it's about twenty five dollars on every, but it's on every platform. It's on Switch. It's on Steam, PlayStation. Uh, but I was playing some of it, had Missy playing some of it with me. It's a lot of fun. I wasn't giant into the old Streets of Rage games. Like, I'd pick them up on the Genesis collections. I grabbed the collection on Xbox when it was on um, Xbox Gold games a few months ago. And, um, I mean, it's, it's you know, I just wasn't there in the time. But, uh, man, this is a really fun game. This is a really fun game. Um, and it's, uh, I think, up to four players, and you can do it online. Um, the nice thing is you can go in and, and op- start a game. And say I want to do an online game and kind of open a room and somebody random can jump in and play with you, you know, kind of like the arcade when somebody puts a quarter on, right? So, uh, go check that out, Krause. You're on Game Pass, aren't you? Actually, I just signed up um, after the show last time I was oh, on. Nice. We gotta have that awesome cast Streets of Rage night then. Yeah, it, <laughs> it's a it's a great service, and especially trying it out for the dollar, you can't beat it. Oh yeah, you know? absolutely. Um, it's, it, and also I, I've been, it's, I'm always hard pressed to like find people that have the same game on the same console to be like, Hey, let's go play a multiplayer game. Exactly. But now knowing like you have game pass and some other friends from the wrestling community have game pass. I can be like, Hey man, you want to go play this game that they just dropped? You know, like I, I feel like, right. I feel a little more open to do that now. Um, mm-hmm. so, I mean, we've been doing a lot of stuff with Rocket League lately on Friday nights. Um, so, but that's also cross play. So that's a lot easier too. But, um, but everybody seems to have it. I mean, it's been around for a long time. So, hey guys, you know what everybody seems to have? Well, we talked about last week about a million people have a podcast, but it's a lot of people <laughs> don't. And I'm like, I'm getting questions like, today. Today, I had I had a good. God bless you. God Thank bless you. Sorry, you. try to run away. God bless you. Um, to, <laughs> hey, you know what? I, I'm gonna I'm gonna make this a teaching moment because I had a really good uh, question come up today because somebody said that they're they had somebody that was looking at Anchor for podcasting. 
which I'm not going to discount Anchor at all. I think if you're starting a podcast, I think if you're hobbyist, you want to try it out, try your try your bones at it. I think it's it's a wonderful program for that. I hear good things about that. But they said, why why should I go with a Sidekick Media Services versus an Anchor? And I said, well, a few things here again is your time, um, your maybe maybe hair loss out of frustration. As you start to make a podcast, and uh, and uh, you're missing the expertise. We've been doing this for 15 years. We have been producing online content, actually longer for online content. Technically, the podcast has been almost 15 years, but we've been doing it for a lot longer with streaming radio and everything like that. Uh, I've already, as you can see, I've already gotten the gray hairs from 15 years of podcasting, and uh, and 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 I can just pass that on without you doing so. Uh, so that's part of what we do here at Sidekick Media Services. We can be the sidekick to your superhero project podcast, video production, whatever the case may be, um, especially with all the shutdowns, with all the live stream uh, situations. Um, there, if you're a church that needs some some help, we're, we've been talking to a few of them over the last couple of weeks, maybe more, I found out before the show. Uh, so, uh, so please go check it out. Uh, we're trying to help everybody out along with this uh, professionally, sidekickmediaservices.com. Check out some of the stuff we've been working on. I'm really excited. Actually, a video project that we were working on the last month is going to be dropping in the next couple of days. Can't wait to uh, uh, can't wait to share that with you guys. Keep an eye out um, on Psychic Media Services on Facebook, Twitter, and of course, we do have a company page over on LinkedIn that's sharing a lot of stuff as well. Instagram too. We're over there too. Um, all the important. We'll get on TikTok sooner or later. It's on the list. It's on the list. <laughs> I can say dancing, dancing Final Cut videos, dancing cursor beach ball Final Cut videos, um, <laughs> or something like that. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. TikTok's on the list. We're getting there. Anyways, so let's get back with this. Um, what do you guys have that you want to get into uh, uh, before we uh, end the show here? Dutters, what do you what do you got going on? I got a uh, funny uh, Animal Crossing update. Okay, gotta have so gotta, gotta have our <laughs> gotta have our update. By the way, the pictures from the, from the wrestling ring have been looking amazing. <laughs> even <laughs> even the sad I can't put the was a it was a panda, panda. dog inside the wrestling ring. Yeah, it's now Paul. Wait, uh, it's Panda Heyman now. Panda Heyman. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Will it yeah. also buy my M Mad Mike a bagel in New York City? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mad Mike came up with a name, but yeah, he's Panda Heyman now. Yes. Uh, so one of the things on Animal Crossing is you, your your island grows weeds, and with those weeds, you know, you try to keep your island clean. You know, the more the cleaner it is, the better, more star rating. Um, so there are now they're with like, they kind of doing like an earth day kind of thing where you can build things out of the, the weeds when you collect them, like hedges and leaf piles, whatever. And, um, there are people who will go to your Island. Like if you, if you have a ton of weeds to clean up and you don't want to deal with it, you can also sell them. So you, you go and, you know, people will go to your Island and pull all your weeds and then, um, essentially take the money they make off the weeds and everybody's happy. The problem is, is friends are <clears throat> posting on Facebook about offering to come to their friend's island with the weeds and the weed word and the weed is causing some issues with Facebook. Just saying and, the word weed. Yes. Okay. So I will, you let know, me go, well, let have me you come collected get, the weeds? Have you? <laughs> yes. Have I, let me go get your weed. Let me go get mm -hmm. some of your weed. Mm -hmm. Got you. Yes. Um, so the, a lot of like groups are reporting that they're getting in, having issues with Facebook um saying their post go against so, Paul, you know yeah it is a, it's a, there's an example of the policy is admin breaches uh admin breaches have put your group at risk uh what uh yeah it says community i mean it's the it's the typical community standards right yeah like i don't think it really says uh community standards breaches for breaches wow and then they're so and so they're putting notices on how to refer to weeds in these groups. Is that what I'm seeing now? Mm hmm. That's yep. what, that's now what... code. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so there's probably code for real weed and so, Animal Crossing weed now. There's oh man. So when that's going to carry over, somebody's going to be like, hey man, you got the you, <laughs> you got some Tom Nook for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so i'll take you to the cranny and sell it <laughs> yes yes so wait what are the alternative names that they've been having for for weeds on here not oh, weed, weeds weeds, weeds. 
And they um, spell it with a Z, so it's edgy. <laughs> yes, yes. I don't know. It's no, such funny. a massive community. Wow. Animal Crossing really is everywhere, isn't it? I load the, a, the W a, plant name. The W plant name. Jeez. <laughs> um, I, I load a pocket camp, and there's literally too much to do now. I'm like overwhelmed uh, when I load it up. Yeah. Have, have you recently? No, I haven't been back. I can't even imagine. Mm -hmm. If I didn't keep doing, like, I have a routine with my island. And if I didn't do all my things on my island, I would be like, bah! (laughs) (laughs) You created these virtual chores for yourself. I I was going to say, this sounds like a job, not a video game. Oh, (laughs) Go ahead. Get started with it. Tom Nook uh, is an indentured servitude manipulator. Uh, (laughs) He's a jerk. That's that's the problem. I, I'm I'm finding myself in these in some of the the iPhone type games I'm playing. It's like, oh, got to make sure I get in before midnight because I only have so many tokens today, and I can only have so much time, and I need to do this, this, this. As as I fire up um, Minecraft Earth to make sure I'm getting stuff around me, mm-hmm. like it's that that like I do find myself in kind of that. Oh, I got to make sure. And if you miss a day, it's like, oh, I missed yesterday's free giveaway. Mm-hmm. And it does cause it does cause problems. Yeah, because you get a bonus for essentially logging in every day, mm-hmm. and then there's different items for sale that you know change daily. Jeez, uh, Chilla, what, what, what's the story you want to hit up here? What story do I want to hit up? Um, so the one that I thought was interesting back on the. Uh, uh, creating a podcast and whatnot. I thought it was interesting. I was looking around at webcams. And it's the Logitech link. Um, I was looking around at webcams because I had someone hit me up and they were like, I can't find a webcam anywhere. What would you recommend? Um, and I was looking at some of the Logitech devices and on the one Logitech, they're releasing a capture application. So Logitech capture is going to make creating content they're, they're claiming easy, fast, and intuitive. I haven't loaded this up yet. But what I thought was interesting is this software will do vertical video capture. It'll do mm-hmm. broadcast, multi-source recording, live text overlays, studio type controls, camera customization, um, recording from multiple sources. So I thought it was pretty neat now the hardware that they recommend you having for this is also has to be relatively um, new, Mm -hmm. but I thought it was a pretty cool technology, but still the problem I ran into, and I'm going to quickly try to hit two of the stories here. um, I was like, how can I turn something someone already has into a webcam? So if you go to the Canon, um, they have created a driver for, most of their cameras that were released in the last two years and it will turn your dslr or even point and shoot um into a webcam and that's the killer app there if you have that high-end thing like i mean we have you know not canon dslrs but we have professional grade equipment of course we do a professional switcher situation and do what we do here in studio Mm -hmm. but i would love to be able to just take one of those and have it behave like we're, we're having problems bringing you guys video back because the device that we have doesn't bring in professional video into Google Meet per se, right? Well, I noticed today, and how does does my video look worse than normal or better than normal? Uh, I don't know. It's 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 a slightly washed out. I, I mean, I don't know All what right. the comparison is. Because I noticed when I went into the video camera settings today, the default in Meet was um, three... 320p or something like that oh geez yeah yeah but it, it, you might default but the out. max the, the max option for me is 720 so yep. yep but i mean that's all we're broadcasting at we're recording at 1080 but uh <laughs> but uh but you know for 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 posts but i mean facebook and everything else only gets us a 720 no matter what right so yeah but, but, yeah, but i thought it was interesting and i've seen a couple of these other ones out there that are kind of made by third parties and work claim to work with a number of different products. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was interesting. Um, Canon was doing it for their DSLRs as well as their point and shoots, as well as some um, mirrorless devices. So 
thought it was pretty cool that they're doing it. I hope they come out with a Mac version because it's mm-hmm. only out there for Windows. Uh, um, but it was, uh, yeah, to your point, it's the, the quality is just a thousand times better. Uh, it, it, what I always look at because every time you do, you, you see those interviews on those uh, network shows. And then we go to like Bill Gates and we're like, wow, Bill's video looks really good. What are they using? <laughs> you know, it's like, that's a DSLR. It's got to be. But it's like, you know, it might not be a DSLR. No, knowing him, it's probably a red camera. <laughs> it's an 8K red camera. And he's, <laughs> you know, doing something like that, you know, versus then the, 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 what the mayor of Atlanta was having some major problems with their internet on the daily show last week, you know, <laughs> like it's all over the place, but it uh, goes to show Kraus, you, you are uh, keeping an eye on the gaming side of things. Yeah. I'm all gaming today. Yeah, there's man. another one actually that I didn't even post. Um, it's a game for iOS and Android. It's mm-hmm. called retro bowl. Um, it's a great little. Uh, if you were a kid, well, I guess because I'm an old guy, but as an old guy, it reminds me of the old yes. video of video like football games. Yeah, like, te- it's like just Tech Mobile. awesome. Yes, like Tech Mobile, exactly. Uh, like I said, it's on Android and iOS. If you get a chance, download it. It's a great little game, and it's I think it's free. Is it free? Okay. Okay, so you so you got the gaming side. Okay, it, it looks yeah, it looks just like like play action foot. No, play action football was a kind of cornered one, but yeah, it looks like that tech mobile kind of thing, right? Yeah, it's just great. It's a lot of fun. I've been having a lot of fun with it. Awesome, awesome. What else you got? So Xbox has had a lot of uh, kind of announcements. Exc- yeah, excited X- about Xbox that. Re- I'm excited about that Assassin's Creed. Uh, oh my Valhalla. goodness, that looked good. Yes, yeah, that looked yeah. awesome. Uh, but I'm sorry, I, I stepped on you a bit there. I was too excited for no, this. But, um, but Xbox Series X, you know, people are freaking out because they released the boot screen. You know, <laughs> the, the, boot screen? the Sega, <laughs> uh, with, it's the boot yeah. screen. Oh. And I guess later this week, actually tomorrow, I think it's Thursday. Yeah, we're no, today's Tuesday. God, they're all blending together. <laughs> uh, in two days, they're going to have some actual gameplay what the hell that's it <laughs> i just played it on the video <laughs> that's it it's literally the boot screen i told you that's uh, it i missed i missed the original one i didn't have an xbox when it was out uh the original one where it was like it was like it was like you know there was there was there's was green liquid like pouring in yeah. somewhere like it was kind of a steel mill kind of thing but it turned into the yeah that <laughs> where's that <laughs> Uh, the Xbox One, I, I just get a screen, right? I mean, well, I barely see it because it's sleeping half the time. So Right, it's just sleeping most of the time. So the only time you see it is when you actually hard reboot. The wild thing for me with the Xbox One since I've been playing with Game Pass is hitting install, sitting there, and oh, hey, the Streets of Rage is on here. I'll hit the button. And then in, in a few minutes, seeing your game, like getting the notification on my phone, your game is installed. And I look over, I'm like, that Xbox never turned on. Yeah, what is happening it, right it now? It is in the background. Yeah, <laughs> it's like this is awesome, um, and I still have an original, original Xbox One. So, anyways, um, so so you have that. It was Cyberpunk. There was a new trailer, was it? Or no, no, no. Tra- it, well, it's just a teaser. All they put out was a literally a post on Twitter. Mm-hmm. It says Night City Wire, June eleventh. So I'm I'm expecting we're going to get to actually yeah. see some gameplay. Wow. Okay. So this is just for the preview. This is again going to be a fall game on the new consoles, right? Well, it was supposed to come out in March. Oh, okay. And it got pushed to September. Mm-hmm. And I really don't have a problem with them pushing a game because I'd rather it be complete. Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. Although I think th- th- I'm a little worried that this game is now going to get stepped on by a whole bunch of other stuff. Yeah, yeah. Who knows what that? Uh, and it's you know because if it had been out now, imagine how many people you know <laughs> the time we would have had to play it. You know, I, but yeah. I want to point out because I remember when an- the Animal Crossing thing was coming down, right? Yeah. And at the same time, it was it was interesting because the same day I believe Animal Crossing and Doom Eternal dropped. Yes. At the same time, and everybody's like, "Oh, Doom! Oh, Animal Crossing! Oh, I'm getting Doom and Animal Crossing." <laughs> Are you getting? Are you yeah. getting Minecraft Dungeons? Uh, uh, well, I will because I'm on Game Pass, I guess. But yep. I'll, I'll give it a try. Oh, right. I'll at least play a little bit. It got delayed. And, like I actually installed the pre-release stuff, and it's just sitting there. I'm like, 
wait, it got delayed until like next month. What are we doing? Yeah. I thought it was the end of May, right? Way well, in May, but no, I I, I yeah. installed it. Oh, like you got month. it. Yeah. I installed it like a month ago. <laughs> so, um, no, it, no, that's really nice. And even the surprises like Streets of Rage for like actually being on there was like, well, okay, like I'm playing Streets of Rage this Friday night. Okay, that's what we're doing. Um, so no, it's good stuff. It is good stuff. And, and I know even more people are jumping in on on board on the uh, the Nintendo Switch idea uh, lately too. So like somebody, <laughs> people are buying Xboxes, people are buying Switches. It's been like people are making a run on games with their uh, stimulus checks and stuff. I guess or time off or what you know whatever the case may be. I guess so. Um, Katie, I, I, I'm sure you feel like you you definitely made the right choice over there. Yes, I'm very happy. Are you play, <laughs> are you playing any? Are you still playing like old school games? A little bit, not so much. It's all it's, Animal it's, Crossing. Yeah, you, you got your you got your Tom Nook chores to hit, to hit up. So yeah, I, I had to keep my island looking nice for my niece to visit. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Party games. I mean, at least until you get a Roomba and then start playing <laughs> Nafy, Nafy Spoonie with a with your Roomba, and that'll be the next. That's the next <laughs> birthday party, right? Woohoo! <laughs> awesome hey guys always awesome we we're going i think we're going a little long here for the episode uh but uh but i i i feel like we could talk for another half an hour and i even just on the story i just saw pop up and i dropped in the group you'll you'll like this one um so i'll put that teaser out there for you guys in the group uh, uh there's I, I just shared over there about social distancing strip joints in um in oregon that have opened up uh, so have fun with that uh, in the awesome cast group. Uh, thank you, Crazy Krause. Thank you for coming back. We haven't scared you away Anytime yet. Anytime you need me, just let me know. Absolutely. Uh, Katie Dudas, Dutters. Uh, Instagram, Kate Marie PGH. Seems to be most of my stuff. Most of the stuff. You're doing Q&As <laughs> on stuff. there. You're yeah, doing, you're doing Q- 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 I can't even say it. Uh, <laughs> chemo Day Q&As. Yes, ask me stuff about chemo and cancer. I know things. There you go. (laughs) uh, John Chichilla, chill on the Twitters. Where's he at? He gone. Is he muted again? He muted himself. Uh, I'm muted again. There he is. Yeah, chill on the Twitters, John Chichilla on the Facebook. Keeping keeping the banking world safe one day at a time. Keeping the lights on. Yes, exactly. And thank you, producer Missy. She's here somewhere, still hanging out correcting me saying me things stuff like that um and uh thank you everybody in the chat room uh as well a lot of you guys hanging out here all night long again we'll be back here again 7 p.m eastern time next week we will have the weekend editor from the verge.com and fellow podcaster on the sorgatron media network kim lyons of the broadcast podcast will be joining us uh so excited to have her on uh, I think she had a pretty busy month from the sounds of it. Um, you know, the, the first kickoff with everything going on with uh, all the shutdowns and everything. But uh, it looks like she's getting her. She's, she looks like she's seeing the sunlight and, and, uh, and we're getting her booked uh, on here next week. So looking forward to that. Um, so uh, and thank you, everybody. Um, we'll see you guys next time. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.